Hey you guys, it's Megan. So I'm finally getting the hang of this webcam situation. Um, so today I kind of wanted to chat with you guys about relationships and you guys know I talk about how me and my friend Alyssa, we just talk about everything on our Thursdays together and a lot of the time we talk about relationships and um, so through all of that, like just talking with her about it and just thinking about my relationship experiences, it made me kind of inspired to talk about it with you guys as well. So I'm just kind of gonna talk randomly about it. Um, I don't really have a plan for what I'm going to say, but I do have some things that I do want to definitely try to remember to mention. So um, for those of you who have, who have been following me for a long time, I made a video really early on in my channel about love and heartbreak and I talked about the relationship that I recently got out of at that time. And it was a really weird time in my life. I dated someone very seriously through my freshman year of college. And um, I was so young. Like, looking back, I feel like I was, like, a kid. And um, it was just... It felt so intense. Like, the relationship was so intense. And that seemed so good at the time because, I don't know, everything else was so confusing to me. I was going to um, a college out of state, away from my family and everyone that I knew. I was losing some of my closest friends from high school. One of my best friends, like, abandoned me, and it was just really a difficult time, and I felt very confused and lost, and when I got into this relationship, it seemed like it was the most stable thing in my life, the, the thing that I could count on the most and I can could count on my boyfriend and it was just so like perfect, it seemed so perfect and it was long distance which made things more difficult but it was like it, he went to a different school so it was always long distance, it's not like we were together and then we're separated or something, it was just like that's how it was and we knew that from the beginning. And I know not a lot of people will want to be in a long distance relationship and so now that I have been, it's kind of something that I guess I am used to almost. So when people are like, oh I don't want to be in a relationship because it's long distance, I almost like want to encourage them to do it just to see how it goes because it is, it can work. It definitely can if both people want to make it work as with any relationship. But, so it was so great, I felt like I was so happy, and like I said, I was really young and I had a really weird time in my life and so many things were changing and I was like in this new place and trying to make new friends and then I had this new boyfriend and it was like, it was a lot all at once I think, and when I look back on it now, I... I realized that I wasn't who I wanted to be. I was very, I guess, malleable in my personality. Like, I wasn't sure who I was, and I think that's common for that age to be really, like, trying to figure out who you are. And now I feel like I have a better understanding of myself now that I'm 22, four years later, and I'm still like not sure about who I am, but I'm definitely more confident in who I am and I don't think I would let someone else's personality or what they want to overshadow mine. And that was what was happening in my relationship. I did not realize it at the time. Of course, this is always the way that it goes. You never seem to realize things at the moment, but I was, my boyfriend had a very strong personality and I loved that about him. He was so sure about who he was, what he wanted in his life, and it was so, like, inspiring to me to be with someone like that. But instead of letting it in, like, encourage me to be the same way, to figure out what I want and to be, like, my full, complete self... I felt like I would just be in his shadow and let him be the strong personality, even though I 
feel like I have a very strong personality and I felt that before I dated him but when I dated him it seemed like he had all of his shit figured out and so he was like the dominant personality in the relationship and I just kind of let that let it be that way like I never really I guess thought twice about it it just was how it was um that's how we like kind of like fell into our roles I guess you would say and the longer I was in the relationship the more I realized I wasn't happy as much as I thought that I was happy and as much as I thought he made me happy I realized I was miserable and it was such a strange thing to come to the realization of like I never never before in my life was I so sure I was like in a perfectly happy state but actually I was miserable like I've been depressed before but I knew that I was depressed like I wasn't confused about it so this was like a very strange thing for me I was very confused how that would be possible but it was definitely because he was such a strong personality and I just kind of let him be that strong personality without like speaking up for myself and trying to be a strong personality back I was just kind of like okay whatever um and when I look back I'm almost glad that it happened that way because now I know that that is something I never want to do again I know that I want to be my complete self with people and even when I thought I was being myself around him and I was being myself, he didn't appreciate me for who I was. He liked me for like what I kind of pretended to me to be, like to be that more submissive person that just let him have his way. He liked that. He liked that version of me. And that is not who I truly am. And when I realized that, when my personality would come out when my loud obnoxious laugh would come out or I would be like I don't know like back sassing him or whatever because that's just what I do that's what me and my friends do that is how we show each other we love each other we make fun of each other and stuff that is just like the type of people that I surround myself with and that's how I don't know I just love people like that and when he was kind of like off put by that even months into our relationship I was like I'm so confused I thought you loved me for who I am but I realized oh young young Megan I realized that I wasn't even being myself with him how could he love me for who I am if I wasn't even being myself so that is something I really learned and in my um, I challenge you speak your truth video videos that is one of my experiences in my life that has inspired me to want to speak my truth more I now am so much more open and willing to be open to people because I don't want to be shadowed I don't want to be overshadowed by other people or I don't want to just go along with what someone else wants even though I want something different and they don't know that and I think that it, in a lot of relationships I've noticed I feel like this is especially a girl thing like we expect our partner to know what we want to just like be a mind reader or something and to just understand us and we get upset when they don't like they don't know why like what we want and they don't understand why we're upset when they don't read our minds and I realized that that's not fair to them that's not fair to anyone and it's not fair to yourself to not speak up about what you really want and then to be upset over it because you could have just said what you really want or said how you really feel and then see where things go and if they still don't get it well then maybe it's not the right person for you or maybe you what I learned, and this is a very difficult thing to learn, is that sometimes you have to take some of the fault. And that, I think, was the most challenging part, the thing, once my relationship ended, that took the most time. And so, like I said, I had this relationship, this very serious relationship, my first year of college. 
I am now one year out of college and I am still continuously healing over this because so many things happened in such a short amount of time and like I said it was a very intense relationship. I was almost positive that we are going to get married and I know that so many people say that but it really I truly believed that and the relationship ended on a very like traumatizing way. I guess two big things happened and I wouldn't be comfortable talking about this a few years ago but now I feel like I can be open with you guys about it or with people about it because I don't think anyone's going to go through the exact same chain of events as me but maybe certain things will be the same and you won't like me I did not realize these things in the moment but now that I've had years of self-reflection and talking about it with my friends talking about it with people I don't really know it really has helped me understand so much and like I have told you guys before I'm a really strong believer in self-reflection and just trying to like figure things out for myself so one of the biggest tipping points or the biggest tipping point in my relationship was that we got in a very serious car accident and unfortunately for me I was the one that was most injured and I was just a passenger in the car and my boyfriend was in the car as well and it was so scary I don't remember any of it um I, I don't think they never said that I had a concussion but it's like I blacked out maybe just to protect myself from what was going on like it was a coping mechanism and a protective thing that my body just reacted and it's extremely scary to me that I don't remember it but I know that if I could remember it it would be way scarier I had so many broken bones. I had broken ribs, a broken vertebrae, a broken cheekbone. Um, Scott, I have um, like the glass. I was in the back passenger seat and the window, it was a T-bone accident. And so when the car hit, the glass shattered. And that's why I have scars here. I have scars on my shoulder. I have like residue, not residue, but like scars in my ear. Um, I still have some like really deep seated glass in my face that they weren't able to get out at the scene or like that night in the emergency room that will be in my face for the rest of my life and it's really scary to have those reminders of what happened without even remembering what happened so anyhow I was in a very serious car accident with my boyfriend and one of his friends and it was the weekend right before my birthday <sighs> of course so that really sucked and I thought in the moment that the that the accident brought us closer together in the moment it really seemed like it did we were like we went through this horrible experience but now we're gonna be closer than ever and the opposite was true. I don't know if it's because we were long distance so it was harder to like connect but I just felt like he didn't understand the emotional like trauma that I was facing. Like it was very scary for me to ride in a car, to drive in a car, to think about cars. The insurance guy was coming over all the time having to like ask me questions and I couldn't answer them because I didn't remember anything and it was just a very challenging time for me and I remember it like I remember the weeks after so vividly like it was last week and I would talk to him on the phone like always but he was very distant and I think I was distant as well because it was very I felt like it was very hard to be close with him because he was being distant about it and he wasn't seriously injured like I was but he didn't have the compassion for me and I didn't understand 
why? Like, I didn't understand it. I was like, why aren't you trying to comfort me when you say that you love me? Like, it didn't, none of it added up. Like, it was so scary for me. Like, I was so, I felt so alone and I felt like he would be one of the only people in my life that would understand because he was there. Like, he went through the same thing as me, just not as, like, seriously in the hospital. But he didn't get it. He wasn't supportive and he was like, why are you always afraid all the time? And uh, I, we never fought before this accident. Like we had like stupid arguments and stuff, but he never made me cry like that. Like he never was so cold to me and so heartless. And that is when our relationship, when it was going like this, all of a sudden went straight into the ground and I I basically like shut him out I didn't want to talk to him I when I did talk to him it was like I was just I was just like a wall that he was talking to like it I didn't feel the love for him like I used to and it's very strange, I think, to go through such a serious event or like a traumatizing event with someone in a relationship when you're so young. Like, I don't know. I, I haven't known any of my other friends who have went through anything like this. So it's really hard for me to imagine like how other people deal with it. But... That was the tipping point of our relationship, but we stayed together. We stayed together and I thought that it would just, it would pass. I don't remember what I f felt or thought during that time. I really wish that I did. I don't know why I stayed with him, to be honest. Um, it was just like, it was what I was used to, I guess. And like I said, I felt like he was someone I could really trust even though I didn't really open up to him because I thought I was being myself but looking back I definitely wasn't being myself. So it's very like confusing even for me to think that that was me. It doesn't seem like me because I am so different because of the experience. So sorry my nose is running and I can't edit these videos. <laughs> um, so that was the tipping point. We dated for a few more months then D-Day happened. So like I said, we were long distance. It was the beginning of our sophomore year, the first week, the end of the first week of school. And um, I, like we were still in our relationship, whatever. I might have been happy. I can't really remember. But it was, it was good to be back at school. I was with, I have two amazing college friends Chloe and Evan and we were hanging out all the time it was so wonderful to see them it was it was really awesome and the night of the next horrible thing my uh Chloe and Evan and I went to the mall Evan always wanted to buy a new pair of shoes the first week so we were shopping with him and I felt like something was wrong like wh I had this like premonition and I know this is going to sound crazy like this is really going to sound crazy but my mom and I have always said that we are like witches or something like we have this sense about things that always comes true it's very 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 weird and freaks me out but I had a really uneasy feeling about that night um with um like dealing with my boyfriend and I bought this really cute scarf that had panda it was like a panda scarf from forever 21 and it had pockets that were like panda faces and I remember so vividly taking a picture of myself with the scarf in my college kitchen and it's like I can picture the picture like it's so long ago but I can like picture it so vividly and I went to text it to him but 
because this was after the accident and after us getting like more distant, I was like, oh, he's not really going to like it. So I didn't send it to him. And I didn't talk to him like all that night. And it was a Friday night. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, and I wish that I sent it to him because I don't know how things would be different. But I am glad that the way things turned out. Anyway. So I did not send it to him. And that night when I was trying to go to sleep, he always called me at night. We always talked on the phone. And I was almost asleep, but I was like hoping he would call me. And he did. And oh my god, it's like I'm transported to that time. Like I can remember every single thing that I was doing. So I answered the phone and I was like whispering because Chloe was sleeping. And he was like, Meg, we have to talk. And it's like, I think one in the morning, like 1.30, something like that. Um, and I was like, oh no, what's wrong? And I went to our dining area. Our apartment was really small. We didn't have like a family room or anything. And I went in there to like have privacy. And I don't remember what he said. Like, I don't remember the conversation, how he said it, but he told me that he kissed a different girl, another girl, and he cheated on me. And I was so in shock. I was speechless. Like, I was saying nothing. I was not reacting. Like, I wasn't crying. I wasn't doing anything. I was just, like, on the phone. Like, I was literally doing nothing. I don't even know if I said anything. Like, I don't remember. It's like a fog. That part is so foggy. And I don't think I understood. I really don't think I understood what he was saying. Like, <laughs> I just don't think I believed him almost. And he was like, I was so drunk and like blah 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 and I didn't want to know anything about the girl of course why would you want to and it was just so shocking and I must have said something because I remember him saying we can't keep talking in circles like go hang up and process this and then call me back and he was like do you promise to call me back because he thought that I would never talk to him again or something and so I promised I would call him back so then I go and wake up Chloe and I am sobbing. I am sobbing so much. She had no idea what was going on. She was just sleeping. I don't even know if she heard what I said because I was like, <gasps> he cheated on me. <laughs> like whatever, sobbing. And she was trying to comfort me and like I didn't know any details. She didn't know like what was going on and I just woke her up. And so eventually I called him back, but this time I was crying, 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 crying. And hours later, probably like 4 a.m. or something, and the next morning I have to had to wake up for church early in the morning. And he was just like, go to bed, we're not getting anywhere. He was so like businessy, like he just was so diplomatic or something. So I went to bed and I... I just don't know what I thought. I don't know. He was like, he was trying to convince me to break up with him. He was like, I wouldn't stay with you if you did this to me. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm a train wreck just bringing you down. And he had all of these like issues after the car accident. He was like, he was already predisposed to like depression and stuff like that. But after the car accident, he was just even more like, like, I don't know, more extreme about things. Like, he was just, he blamed himself for the accident, even though it wasn't his fault. And he was trying to push me away after this whole thing. And part of me, looking back, thinks that he might have, like, kissed someone else and cheated on me because he felt like he didn't deserve me and didn't want to keep me in this relationship, but he would never have broken up with me. He wouldn't have. I promise you that, and I know that that sounds really, like, conceited or, like, I don't know what it sounds like, but he wouldn't have, and I don't think I would have break 
broken up with him either. And so he was like, basically trying to convince me to break up with him, even though I didn't need much of convincing um, because I was so upset and so heartbroken and the trust that we had and so many people when they're long distance like their biggest concern is that the other person will cheat on them and that was never never a concern for me because his girlfriend before that cheated on him and he one of our first conversations was about that about how we would never do that to someone because we understood how badly that hurt and that's why it was so unbelievable to me that this happened and oh yeah you're so drunk whatever like I don't think that's that's not a good reason. And I know what a lot of you are going to, or a lot of people think is why would he tell you? Most people who cheat on people do not tell the person. And that is just his personality. He was always honest and I always respected him for that. And I still do to this day because if he wouldn't have told me that he cheated on me, I would have stayed with him. I could possibly still be with him and never know. And I'm just so thankful that he did tell me because I I don't even know what my life would be like, honestly. So anyhow, I thought about it and thought about it. The only person I told other than Chloe was my best friend Caitlin at home. And... I called her and told her everything and I was trying to get in contact with my boyfriend to talk to him about it and he was not answering and I was like is this person kidding me like are you kidding me right now like you just told me you cheated on me and that you wanted to talk the next day it is the next day I'm ready to talk to you let's talk but you won't answer your phone oh that drives me crazy to this day um but because he didn't answer, it gave me a lot of time to think about it. And so I told Caitlin, and Caitlin is very rational, very level-headed. I can be very emotional and do things rashly, but Caitlin is very level-headed. And she knew all about our relationship. She hung out with us, stuff like that. Like, most of my friends didn't like him. And my family didn't like him, and that should have been a sign, but, like... I didn't really care because I was young and stupid, um, but Caitlin like what like supported me and the relationship because she loved me. So she helped me and helped me realize that I did not want to be with him anymore, and that it's unaccept unacceptable to be cheated on, even if the person tells you. And. So I wanted to get into contact with him to tell him what I've decided and he didn't ever get back to me till like that night, which is like so ridiculous. Um, but anyhow, I broke up with him that night and it was so hard. Like it seemed like it might be easier just to stay with him because I didn't want to have to break up with him. Like, it was, it was extremely hard, especially because I was, even though he had hurt me so much from, like, the accident and being so, um, like, cold and incompassionate, I still loved him. Like, I loved him more than I have ever loved anyone outside of my family. And it was so difficult to decide to say goodbye. And so I did break up with him and I'm glad that I did. But so it's been years, years since our relationship and it was really hard for the first, I'm going to say two years. Um, the first six months were like impossible. I was crying all the time. I never wanted to get out of bed. That is about the time when I went to therapy because I was so depressed and I had so many emotions, not only about the relationship, but also about the car accident. I never like, 
got not like got over it but like I never talked it out with someone other than like the insurance people and like my family knew and stuff but I never just like spewed it all out and I never had went to like a professional so that's the time that I went to therapy for a few months and um he was trying to contact me about every month I would say and it was really hard for me to not talk to him because part of me like never wanted to hear his voice again because one, he disgusted me, but two, I knew that I would fall back to him. The only way that I can describe my ex-boyfriend is that he is like a drug to me. Like I... I'm a totally different person when I am with him. I do not like who I am when I am with him, but I like gravitate towards him and he is like, he's so like convincing that he's a salesperson. So that's also like a warning sign for me now, but he's so convincing to me that I always want to go back with him. A few times within that next year of us being broken up, he tried to convince me to be in a relationship with him again. And I almost said yes multiple times, even though I knew I didn't want that. So it was very hard to not talk to him, but I knew that I had to not talk to him. Even to this day, I... I can't talk to him. It is like, I am so weak when I talk to him and it is, it's so almost embarrassing to say that, but I just can't do it. I cannot talk to him without being this stupid idiot version of myself who I really don't like and who no one really likes. No one really liked me when I was dating him because I was, I wasn't myself. But something this is a huge, huge epiphany that I have had within the last month. And so like I said, it's been like four years since we dated. Four years. And I just had a new epiphany about it. This is how much I think about stuff. Like, I don't know. I just like to figure out like the why behind everything. And sometimes from... Like, for the past few months, or the past few years, I should say, like, since I've gotten over, like, I don't really want to be with him, I understand that, and he's not trying to contact me. Like, he used to try to contact me every month or every few months, and it was very, it was very, like, traumatizing for me. Every time I got a text from someone whose number I didn't have in my phone, I would have such anxiety, and I always hoped that it wasn't him because he just always... He was always trying to, like, manipulate me into being with him again. And it was very, like, hard for me. Um, and he also has some health issues now that he told me without me asking him. And it's just, like, why do you keep wanting me to worry about you? Like, I have enough problems. <laughs> but um, one of my biggest epiphanies is that... So I was the one that broke up with him. And he is the one that wanted to get back with me. And even though I still had feelings for him, I did not want to contact him. And I thought that that was mostly because I didn't want to, I couldn't put myself in the position to open myself up to him because like I said, he's my drug. I can't, I can't be that person anymore. I will not allow it. My friends will not allow it. My family will not allow it. It's just not, it's not safe for me emotionally to be with him. And... I always thought that was the reason that I did not want to talk to him. And that is definitely one of the reasons. But recently I have come to the conclusion after talking with Alyssa because she is in the opposite situation as me. Um, and she didn't understand why her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, wasn't ever trying to contact her. And it hurt her so much that it seemed like he didn't care. And I realized because I was the one that never wanted to contact him that a huge part of why I did not contact him and I still will not, even though I want to like, just see how he's doing. Like, it's been so long. I don't know. It would just be nice to see how he's doing. But every time I think that I have to tell myself no. 
and I realized that one of the biggest reasons why I can't do that is because I would hurt him so much. And I know that he hurt me in so many ways, but I would never want to purposely hurt him. And what I mean by that is that if I contact him, which I have, I've only contacted him like once or twice in all the years that we've been broken, broken up. It's always him contacting me. And if I went and contacted him, there would be like, he would have hope that I might want to be with him again. And even if that's not true, even if he doesn't give a shit about me anymore and wouldn't want to be with me, I wouldn't want to like lead him on or like confuse him even though it's been so long. And so for anyone who is like you got broken up with and the person that you were with who you loved so much is not contacting you and you don't understand why and you feel so hurt and so ignored and you think that they do not care. I bet you most people who are the person that breaks up with someone, they do still care, but they do not want to hurt you. They do not want to lead you on and confuse you. Like, and they, they just don't want to hurt you because they still care about you. And I know I've been in the opposite situation as well, where I liked the person way more than they apparently liked me. And it hurt me so much that they were not trying to talk to me. But I realized that it's because they don't want to lead you on. They do not want to continuously disappoint you and have you get your hopes up time and time and time again. Which totally makes sense because once I realized that I was doing that to my ex-boyfriend, now, now it makes sense that other people might do it to me. And I don't know if that's like a really big epiphany, but for me it's something I have never considered before. I never thought that I wasn't contacting him because I didn't want to hurt him. It was always because of me. I didn't want myself to get hurt. But when I realized that I was doing it also to protect him, it made it made so much more sense. It really, really did. So I don't know. I don't know if any of this was helpful. I honestly don't. This was kind of like a therapy session for me. This is so long. Um, I just have never told you guys the whole story and obviously this is not the whole story but these are like the main points um I am deeply afraid of being cheated on again it is something that I never worried about before and now I am worried about it and I am semi apprehensive of being in another relationship but with the most recent guy that I was talking to, the one who didn't really want to talk to me anymore, um, I felt like I was so myself. And that is something that I am extremely happy about because it showed me, even though nothing came of that, it showed me that I can be who I truly am with someone. And even though I wasn't completely myself with my ex-boyfriend, I can, now that I have grown up and I have gone through these experiences and I have understood that I am at fault for a relationship semi-crumbling because I wasn't, I wasn't myself with him and I, it wasn't fair to me and it wasn't fair to, it wasn't fair to either of us for me to not be myself and it was just something that I really am passionate about now, I guess, is that I want to just be truly myself with anyone I meet in the future, whether it's just a friend or if it is a potential person I will date. And I'm so glad that all these horrible things <laughs> happened to me because at the time it was, I never thought that I would pick up the pieces. I never did. And now I am so much stronger. I I just can't even believe it that that was me. It doesn't seem like me talking about it. I know that it's me, but it doesn't I read back some of the messages that 
I said to him and that doesn't sound like me at all and that's kind of just a message to everyone that when you are young and I'm still young so I'm probably gonna when I'm 30 and I look back now I'm probably gonna be like oh my god I was such an idiot but honestly when I was 18 I didn't know anything I didn't know anything about myself I didn't know anything about the world I didn't know I just didn't know anything and now I feel like because I have experienced so much because I've made so many mistakes and I have reflected on those mistakes I have grown to be such such a better person I never want to go back to that version of myself that I was four years ago and I am just I'm really proud of myself honestly and I've never really said that out loud about this situation but it was it was so hard especially the car accident um and it's something that I don't like to share with people really um I don't know why just because it's so like sen it's such a sensitive topic for me and I don't know it's just difficult and it sucks that I it happened and it was like the tipping point of the end of my relationship but I am so glad that that relationship ended I was able to excel so much in college my freshman year like I said I was an idiot I was an idiot about my friends I was an idiot about my relationship I wasn't doing as well as I could in school and after I broke up with my ex-boyfriend I got a job. I was super dedicated to it. I became a research assistant for one of my professors. Um, I was an office assistant. I had A's and I did so well in my classes and I felt so proud of myself. And I honestly am so happy with the way that things turned out. Even though I was so heartbroken and I have these like emotional scars and I had, I feel like I still have baggage about it, of course. But because I have really, it's been a long time, like I said, and I've really taken this time over the past few years to really try to analyze all of the things that happened in our, in our relationship. And I didn't go to into everything in this video because a lot of it's very personal, but the main things that were the issues in our relationship I mentioned. And... I have made a promise to myself that I will not let someone else's strong personality overshadow mine. And even if they have a strong personality, they should be themselves. But I want to be myself too. And I don't want to feel like I can't be myself because they might have a strong personality too or whatever. And I don't think I'll really have that problem because I understand now that that was one of the big issues in my past relationship. And, um, I don't know, I'm just so much happier now. I thought that I was happy then, but I was so, so unhappy. And, um, I'm single right now, but I, I feel like I do not need someone to make me happy. I can make myself happy, but when I meet someone that is the same way, like, they are happy with themselves, we will click and we will be good for each other. Like I need someone who is sure of themselves and someone unlike the person I was my freshman year of college. And I think that it's really hard to be in a relationship at that age or like in high school and stuff. And you're just such a like, I don't know, you're so delicate and you're so like confused and you don't really understand yourself and I think that it's really I'm really happy with the way that my life is turning out things are really falling into place and um I don't know I'm just really excited to see where things take me and my experiences in the future in relationships because I think that I'll be so much stronger and happier in future relationships because I understand I understand what I can do to make things better because before when I was freshly like out of that relationship I was blaming all of it on him and once I realized that I could have done things to strengthen our relationship it still would have ended but 
it in the moment I could have done things that would have strengthened our relationship and that would have made myself happier as well instead of always thinking he has to do everything and figure everything out he's the reason I'm miserable well part of the reason I was miserable was because I was like hiding myself and that I cannot blame completely on him I could have spoke up sp spoke my truth and just saw where things took me I don't know now I feel like I can't speak anymore but anyhow long story short long story long it's been 45 minutes um I'm so happy now I am so happy with the way things turned out I don't know how many of you guys watch New Girl but in the first episode of New Girl the pilot episode when Jessica Day finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her or has been cheating on her and she breaks up with him she says thank you for cheating on me because if I if you didn't we would have been married and I would have been miserable and oh that quote resonates with me so much for this one specific like instance like thank you thank you for cheating on me even though I have a little bit of anxiety about people doing that to me in the future I am so glad that I got out of that relationship and I am just so much happier now. It is insane. So also, if you ever feel like you need to break up with someone but it's very difficult for you to, one quote that really, really helped me is actually from Harry Potter and Dumbledore said it. And he said, sometimes the hard thing and the right thing are the same. And I love that. It really, really spoke to me at the time for helping me realize that even though it was incredibly hard to decide to break up with him, it was the right thing. And I am so glad that I did it. So that is my parting note. Thank you for watching this TV show length <laughs> video. Um... I don't know if this helped anyone. It helped me get it off my chest. And um, if any of you guys are going through hard times in your relationships or have gone through hard times, I know that you will come out on the other end stronger and happier and a much, just a much better version of yourself in the end. I, I truly promise you that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much, especially with such a long video. I don't know if anyone actually watched this whole thing, but um, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.